Okay, now that your sky is dry, the next step is to do the mountains areas and you have crisscrossing lines that are separating the mountains. Your palette's going to have white with some purple and you're going to, I'd suggest you use your pointy rounded brush to blend the white and the purple to get a light value and values are created or colors are lightened by adding um, white to that color to make it a tint. And the first step you're going to do is with the tip of your brush, paint right along the top edge of where your mountains, the top edge of your mountains. So where they're meeting the sky and where they're kind of overlapping each other in the background also. With the light value of purple. And this light value of purple is going to actually make these mountains appear like they're way off hidden in the distance. So now I'm going to just wipe the extra light purple off of my brush and just dip the brush into the white because I'm going to gently brush from side to side to just lightly go down and blend the edge of those mountains in up until the top of my ground line. So I just want to eliminate that edge with my white and purple to create a darker top edge that slowly fades to just the white or a super light purple by the time it gets down to the ground line. You want to use your round brush because you want to be able to see the direction of the brush strokes. You don't necessarily want it to look too much like a gradient because land is never completely smooth. And remember, it's very important that you paint right up to the edge of the tape so that there's not a white line on both sides of the tape either. Okay, so there's your mountains. You kind of have a soft line on the bottom to kind of show those mountains overlapping each other in the background. Once you're done with the mountains, the next step is to right away work on the land, but you'll need a different paint palette for that. So we'll get you ready and show you in the next tutorial.